Hey guys and girls, welcome back to your super duper extraordinary example video series. And this is the second example. And uh, so what we're going to be going through today is some simple input and output and a little touch, a little, little, little touch on variables. Okay, because so we need them if we're going to input something into some thing that can hold the value. So that's what your variable is going to be. Excuse me. So um, let's see here. Let us begin. Let's make a new file. Let's call it example uh, example zero two like that, and it's empty. Cool. So what we have here is we have a file that already contains a main function. This is a good thing to go through as well. In one project, you can only have one main. Okay, and we don't want to make ev a new project for every example, right? That's not a it's not really fun. So what we're going to do is we're go I'm going to show you two ways that you can handle this. And uh, the easiest way, of course, for these small files is this. Let's see. First, I'll show you what happens if you're trying to run a program with two main functions. Yes, please. It's going to try to build both. And it's going to be like, hmm, bro, main function already defined. Hmm, you better do something about this. So OK, fine. Let's do something about it. We'll take this. And we'll just, there's a little button up here in Visual Studio. Some IDs don't have this. In the worst case, you could use these comments. Whoops, the wrong way around. You do that, and you do that. And you commented out the whole block. Okay, that's a comment for a block. A, co a block is basically several lines in one. And for one line, you use the double dashes, or the slashes, excuse me. So, but what we can do is we can do that. Boom. So that's one way. Another way is that we could just go in here and we could exclude it from project. But the problem is then you're going to have to go in your file and you're going to, I'll show you. It, now it's gone, right? But it's not deleted. What we could do is we can add an existing item and we're going to just, yeah, it's this one. <gasps> it's hard to choose sometimes. You know, I don't know if it was one or two. You know, I got confused, bro. But it's there now. So don't worry if you do that, it won't disappear. But anyway, let's get back to it. So just comment it out. Now we can run this program. And uh, the compiler, basically, I can just explain it quickly. The compiler does not interpret the code. It does not care about the code written within the, uh, the commented out sections, right? So the compiler is going to be like, OK, bro, I'm not going to take this and interpret it into hardware code. And that's what the compiler does. It's a big Google Translate for the computer. All this code you see here, this isn't what the computer sees. All this is going to be turned into other types of zeros and ones and all that stuff and just hardware code, which is really hard, uh, at least for me to understand. So this is a good way. This is why we have different programming, blah, programming languages to make it easy for ourselves. So let's get started. Input and output. So what we need today is we're going to need a another library which we're going to talk about more later. We're going to include string. And a string is basically, this is a string. okay, And it's a series of characters and spaces and, and other symbols and stuff. So we need that because we're going to have to store a name. We're going to have to store a date. And we're going to have to uh, display those later. So you can't just store them without some kind of container, right? So think of it as a little box we're making for a specific type of, uh, of data. So a string is also part of the STDs. That's why we have the uh, STD namespace here. So string, we're going to have a name, OK? And what you want to do in C++ is you almost always want to initiate your variables. It's always good, because if you forget, now this is an empty string. It doesn't have anything in between. See, we could initiate it to anything. So it will start with that value. But if you do that, it's empty. But if you don't, it's going to, at least in C++, it has a undefined value, which is very bad. So you don't want that. If you, if you use an undefined variable, or a variable with undefined value, there's going to be some errors and stuff sometimes. So uh, do that from the start. And we can actually, we can, for the date, we can use, we can use three different ones. So we use integers here. Integer is a a uh, type that holds a single number without decimals. So an integer, basically, yes. So we're going to do that. We're going to have a int. Uh, we're going to have year. 
make it zero, int month zero, and integer for uh, date zero. So that we have our containers, little small little boxes in our bigger box with our books of libraries from the library <laughs> to uh, to build all this stuff with. So basically like Lego, right? We have all our pieces now. Now we can build. So we're going to start by telling the user, dear user bro, please input a name for bro. Okay, so this is going to output to the screen like we uh, talked about in the earlier example directly. We don't have an end line here because uh, we want the if we end the line, it's going to go into the second line, and then it's going to start asking for name down there. But you'll see the difference. And then we use the new thing, the new function here, sin, cn. And it uses the operator at the other, in the other way. So this is for sin, and this is for cout. Remember that. And we'll see. Sin, we're going to take the name. So we had our container name, right? So the user is going to input something through the keyboard, and it's going to go in through the stream into the name container, the string variable. And C out, we don't need a variable because it's just uh, these literals here that we have written ourselves. It's going to stream that out. So we can just start by uh, trying this. Let's see. So dear user, please input a name for bro. So broski. Okay. And see how it didn't go to the, otherwise it would have asked me for the name down here, but I wanted it to do it directly after. And then it went to return zero and it ended. So we have the name there. Now we want to get the dates, right? And this is cool because here we can uh, we can input all these in a series. So let's see here. Uh, in oh wait 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 wait, dear user, bro, please input a date of birth. Bam. Okay. And same thing here. I don't want it to go to the second line. So what I'll do is. I'll do like this. We can do this actually. Year, month, date. Okay, this is the Swedish format, so bear with me. Uh, but anyway, let's see. So it's going to take in the year first, then it's going to take in the month, then it's going to take in the date. So basically, what this does is every time the user input something one two three four five and then presses enter it goes and tries to input the next one and then enter and the next one okay or white spaces I'll show you both white spaces are yeah just space so we'll see here um, and then of course we want to output all these things name and then end line and then we're gonna do year and then we got the month and then we got the date. Okay, so basically what this is going to do is in a stream, we're going to print out to the screen the name, which now should contain a name that has been inputted. We're going to end the line, and then we're going to print out the year, month, and the date in that order. And without any end lines, and a space in between them. And then we're going to end the line at the end. So a program basically goes from the right to no from the left to right top to bottom so we can assume down here that something already has been inputted here because we've gone through all this already we can't just go from here to here we can do that later with functions and stuff but right now it's just all the way down well basically not even then in the main function everything just goes straight up down like this with ifs and and different things we'll be able to uh, make some conditions but right now just top to bottom so here we can assume now let's see Let's run this. See what happens. Okay, let's call him Broski, and then we got the uh, 1995 white space uh, 04 12 23. Whoops. Well, see, I used spaces here, right? And it could, it could uh, see that I wanted to input the month after the year because I inputted a space and then the date. Okay, and then we got these printed out as well. And another way we could do this is by pressing enter. So, broski, 1990, 20, oh, whoops, 12, December, 22. And we have the same effect, right? 
So basically that's a little simple input output program that you can play around with. Very easy. These are the libraries you need and this is all the puzzle pieces you need. So I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.